please turn the oven to the oven bluntly in your Bibles. Sing to the Lord new new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and praise the Lord's name. Proclaim God's salvation day after day. Our scripture for this Christmas Eve is taken from the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in a land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. You have given them great joy, Lord. You have made them happy. They rejoice in what you have done, as people rejoice when they harvest grain or when they divide captured wealth. For you have broken the yoke that burdened them and the rod that beat their shoulders. You have defeated the nation that oppressed and exploited your people, just as you defeated the army of Midian long ago. The boots of the invading army and all their bloodstained clothing will be destroyed by fire. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice for now until the end of time. The Lord Almighty is determined to do all this. On this holy night, we light the Christ candle. As we have been called to be peaceful, hopeful, joyful, and loving, let us now proclaim Christ as the light of the world. Let us pray. O oh God, you call all of us to be faithful, not knowing right and wrong, and choosing right as professed about your Son, about, but to have a deep abiding faith in you as well. O oh God, help us to be faithful. Amen. We can officially begin our worship service knowing that baby Jesus is amongst us. Let us stand and join together in our call to worship. Come, it's Jesus' birthday. Come, let us go to the stable of Bethlehem. Come, let us worship Christ, the newborn King.
be seated. As the angels announce the birth of our Savior, the heavens declare the glory of God. The shepherds ran to a Bethlehem stable to see a babe lying in a manger. We rejoice in the new life God gives us as we await Christ's coming again. The shepherds praised and worshiped God for all they had seen and heard. invite you to listen once again to that promise of Isaiah found in Isaiah 9 beginning with the second verse the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light those who lived in the land of deep darkness on them light has shined you have multiplied the nation you have increased its joy they rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exalt when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Let's join in the response of Christmas litany. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. We sing praise to Christ, the King. As we sing praise to the name of the Lord and proclaim God's salvation, let us declare the glory of the Lord and God's marvelous deeds among all peoples. The heavens display God's splendor and majesty. God's strength and glory are seen in his sanctuary. We worship the Lord in the splendor of God's holiness. All the earth trembles before the Lord our God.
The heavens rejoice, the earth is glad, the fields and their creatures, yes, the trees and the birds, all sing for joy. Let us listen to the very familiar words of the Christmas story as told by Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, in the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger for there was no room for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all the words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glory and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them.
tonight we're going to have a special presentation, a story about Come to the Party, featuring the innkeeper and his wife, Leah. changed. Leah, we need those rooms sweeped for our guests. More food. Come on, Leah, what's the hold up? That's all I've been hearing lately from my husband, and it's beginning to take a toll on me. Uh-oh, here he comes. I better get busy. Jacob thinks our Bethlehem Inn is a four-star hotel, and it is, but only because of me. I'm his wife, Leah, and I'm the only maid here. I work, and he profits. Look at him counting his money. That's all he does all day long. All he sees is that gold coin coming into his pockets, all because of the census that Caesar Augustus ordered. A census, that's taking account, you know. Well, I could do that. And matter of fact, I think I'll take a break and take a little census. Let's see, how many children do we have here tonight? I think I will count them. One, two, three, four. This is harder than I thought. Maybe I could get help from the children and they could come up here and I could take a little break and then we could do a head count. Would you like that? Come on up and join me. My, don't you all look nice this evening? Look at you, you're all dressed up, and I have my cleaning clothes on. Boy, you look so special. Is tonight special? Why? It's Christmas. Yeah, Christmas Eve. What are we getting ready for? Christmas. And is that when we celebrate somebody's birthday? Birthday? Did I hear somebody say they're celebrating a birthday? Leah, did you clear that with me? You know there's no room here at our Bethlehem Inn. No, no, children, there's no room for a party like that. You might as well just go on home. And you, my dear Leah, had better get back to work. Oh, look, here comes another customer. Sorry, mister. No reservations here. Try the Super 8 down on Nazareth Street. Oh, children, you don't have to go. Don't pay any attention. Just look at him. He only has one thing on his mind, and that's making a buck off of somebody else's need. Do you know that he even took money from some couple that he sent down to the stable? He took money from them, and they're expecting their first child, a baby. And do you know who that was? It was Mary. She was a young girl, and her husband, Joseph, and they were expecting their first baby. And do you know we had a birthday party tonight? Don't tell my husband, Jacob, because he thinks I was working. But I took time out to go and help them. They needed my help. Mary was a very young girl, but she was a real trooper, and she had a baby, and she named him Jesus. Do you know what that means? His name Jesus means one who saves, and it's the greatest gift that Mary could give us is the birth of her son. So we had a birthday party down at the stable. 
Joseph came and got me when it was time for the baby and said he needed help. So I went to help them. And they didn't have anything. They were very poor. And I had some extra clothes and linens. And I took those and I wrapped the baby up and I put him in the manger. There wasn't a bed down in the stable. But the clean hay made a warm cradle for him. And then, guess what? Something happened. The shepherds came, and they were so excited when they saw the baby. They were filled with joy, and they ran and they told everybody else that they could see about the new baby. They were so happy. And tonight, I want to share that joy and excitement with you. I know tonight is not your birthday. Is, does anybody have a birthday here tonight? Maybe they do. No. Luke. <laughs> Luke. <laughs> but I do have something that I want to share with you. And I want to share that gift like Mary gave to the world and show you the excitement that the shepherds have. I want to share something with you. And the greatest gift that I could give to you is the gift uh, of happiness and love. And when people touch our lives and it reminds us of the love that Jesus has for us, that's the same love I want to share with you. Okay? How about if we bow our heads and say a prayer? Can we do that? <laughs> Lord God, we thank you for the gift of these precious children who have come here tonight to celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus. Look with favor upon them and their families gathered here to worship the Christ child. Help them to grow in wisdom and understanding of who you are. Hold them close to your heart and increase their love for you and others. Touch them this night, we pray. Okay, the special gift that I have that I want to share with you is in this basket. And could somebody, this might even take two people, could somebody go get my husband and bring him over here so he can help us? Can you go get him? It'll probably take a couple of you. Bring him over here. <laughs> Good job. We have a gift that we want to share with you tonight, all the children that are up here. In our basket here, we have little lights, little squeeze lights. And later in the service, when we do the candlelight service, all the children up here will use this instead of the candle. And this will remind us of the light of Jesus and how Jesus is a light in our life, okay? So tonight, instead of using the candles, you'll get to use these special flashlights, okay? Squeeze them. And then you take this with you tonight, and every time you use it, you remember Jesus and the special gift. Okay? Okay, we're going to pass these out. And then you can return to your seats. can return to your seats. Thank you, Leah and the innkeeper. And children, you're welcome to take those home tonight, too, after the service. It seems that Leah, our innkeeper's wife, 
has certainly summed up the meaning of Christmas. Christmas is a celebration of a gift of life, a baby born, a child taking its first breath, and all the hope that this new life brings and gives to a family. But this gift of life has turned everything around before Jesus did not come to receive. Jesus came to give. To give the very thing that we celebrate tonight, his life. What a gift that truly is. Because he was born as a child in a stable, back behind the inn at Bethlehem, this gift is for everyone. To all who, like the shepherds in Leah, come to seek him and his touch. In all the hustle and bustle of life, in all the trials and tribulations that continually seek to overwhelm us. In the midst of little problems as well as big ones. We fail to recognize, to feel, to be open to that touch of Jesus. A touch that would give us hope and peace and love as well as forgiveness and guidance. As we celebrate Christmas, we are reminded that Jesus, who touched the lives of the shepherds and of Leah, continues to touch our lives with hope and with love. Christmas is very peculiar because it touches both the Christian and the non-Christian. Most non-Christians, it seems, do accept it, and perhaps they even envy our belief. For us who are Christians, we remember it as the anniversary of the time that the Lord of the universe came down to the earth in the form of a helpless little baby. It's quite a day and a happening to honor for some, it is a very startling idea. They find it uncomfortable. They can't even see God, and they can't accept that the greatest gift came in the form of that helpless baby. And yet our God had a good idea in coming to us in that manner, for everyone loves a baby. And then he went a step further. He didn't want just to rule over the people he wanted to know us. Jesus did not remain a baby. He grew up, and he learned everything there was to know about humanity because God wanted to be intimately involved with all aspects of life. Through Jesus, God came to us so that he might know our joys and our sorrows and our strengths and our weaknesses so that he would know how to give us his greatest love his greatest support and forgiveness and grace. The Christmas story is told again and again throughout the centuries, and it goes right to the heart of the listener. As Christians, we rejoice in the truth, and we believe. It is Christmas Eve. Maybe you didn't get all your shopping done. Maybe you got caught up and swamped with the business of the season. That's okay. But tonight, right now, God calls us to be at peace because the Christmas story stands and God reaches out to touch the hearts of his people. As we celebrate this night, we can be confident that through this wonderful story, God's touch will invade our hearts and we will truly know the love of God. Yes, the Christmas story stands. And no matter how well or how poorly we celebrate it, it is true. God loves us. A child in the manger announces it, an empty tomb proclaims it for all eternity. God's touch through Jesus is ours. Let us pray. Our loving God, we thank you for giving us a chance once again to celebrate the birthday of your son. We remember with wonder the signs of his arrival, the glorious singing of the angels, the beckoning twinkling of a star, the hushed stillness of the night. We praise you for all who welcomed him, for sturdy, reliable Jesus, for beautiful, gentle Mary, 
For the shepherds, although confused, they were open-hearted. And for the wise men, astonished and deeply moved, and even for the cattle who looked on rather confused, they shared their home with him. We pray that our hearts may always be open, not just to the Christ child, God, but to all your children of all ages and nations and colors. As you sent Jesus, not just to his own people, but to all the world as the bearer of good news of your love. So let us carry the good news into the divided, hurting world, beginning with our families and our congregations and our community. Make the spirit of Christmas linger in our hearts, dear God, not just tonight, but throughout the year, so that we may feel freely and happily share your gifts with others. We pray especially for those who may have never heard the story, that they may at some time have that opportunity and to respond to his loving claim. We pray too for those whose lives at this time are so filled with hate and violence and fear, they may be unable to believe your love. Reduce everywhere the noise of war and abuse and strife so that someday the whole world may enjoy the stillness of Christmas Eve and clearly hear the song, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace, goodwill among people. So it is, we offer this prayer in the name of Lord Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Amen. As a reflection of this wonderful gift that's been given to us, let our evening offerings now be received.
let us bow in prayer. With joy and thanksgiving, we present these offerings with grateful hearts for the amazing gift God has already given to us, his only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May they be blessed in such a way that in some measure they will help share the good news to all of God's people. Amen. In just one moment, these who are now receiving the light of God will be passing it to each of you. We invite you to make sure if you're the one with the candle that is lit, you hold it upright, or the one lighting the candle tips it, and then pass it down the rest of the roll of the people within that same pew. While we're lighting them, Andrea is going to play Once Through Silent Night, and then we'll be singing it together with her. The words are in your bulletin. children with flashlights are welcome to hold them up high. As we continue sharing the light, let us sing silent night. There's three verses printed in the bulletin. As we sing that, just happen to glance around the sanctuary and see how much light is given off by the candles that we share, knowing that this is God's love that shines to us and through us.
I invite you to take a moment just to look at the reflection of one another in the soft glow of God's love. In that, we celebrate God's gift to us this evening. Let's join in our commission. Go in the name of Jesus, whose birth we celebrate tonight. Go in the love of God, who sent his Son, our Savior. Go in the power of the Holy Spirit, proclaiming by your life this wondrous news. I'm asking you to stand carefully as we're about to sing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. We do this with great joy of the news that we now have to share with one another and with the world. joy be led in peace. Cradle Christ in your hearts. Return to your home with praise on your lips and joy in your souls. Amen. Amen.